Oh, I'm psyched to get to chat with you guys today. Um, just mostly going to do a highlight of all of the crazy awesome things that have happened in Q2. Um, for those of you who are maybe joining us for the first time, um, IPFS is aiming to make the web work peer to peer. So um, instead of working kind of with a central server and location addressed um, way of finding and accessing information in, in the HTTP model, IPFS more resiliently and directly connects machines with each other so that they can operate even in um, sub areas or, or um, in more resilient circumstances directly and are operating and sharing data with each other. Um, so when you compare the two um, in a normal HTTP world, you are maybe grabbing baz.png from example.com. And if example.com gives you different things or is down or has moved that file or um, uh, is no longer serving that to you, you're out of luck. You can never get baz.png um, in our wonderful content addressed world where we're actually um, accessing data by what it is instead of where it's located. Um, you have a much more resilient way of finding and accessing that content, anyone can give it to you and you can validate that it's the thing you're looking for. So IPFS aims to address a whole ton of different problems. Um, uh, a number of the, the examples are um, kind of as we were talking about, security model of being able to, to check that the data you are accessing is the data you are looking for, um, being more resilient to work well in emerging networks, being more censorship resistant um, so that you can't, uh, can't take down like uh, large data sets that many different people are trying to host and make resilient, um, works better offline, and a number of other things along those lines. Um, we've seen a lot of awesome progress on the IPFS ecosystem side. This is our handy dandy publicly edible ecosystem diagram. Um, as you'll see, I think we, we took a pass at adding more things. So this is probably a little bit more cluttered than where you saw it um, in, in kind of the, the end of Q1, but some awesome additions, um, some really cool new collaborations, um, a lot of things happening through our dev grants program. So um, QX and NixOS and Rust IPFS, um, a lot of new things here in our other category, which we just haven't finished categorizing yet. Um, but Magic Leap from a content perspective, we have you know more um, visibility across persistence, uh, all of the awesome DeFi um, front ends that are using IPFS to make their, their DeFi platforms uh, fully decentralized. So a really a lot of really awesome cool stuff happening here. And if you are not represented and you're working on an awesome project in the IPFS ecosystem, um, I'll drop a link in chat later. Please come in and update this and add the, the cool things you're working on here so that we can make sure it's represented and um, people can find and, and see the cool stuff you're working on. Um, so the IPFS public network is made up of many, many, many different nodes that are being run by lots of individuals throughout the world. Um, we saw a huge increase in this last year, over a 30x increase just within 2019, which is super cool. The network is now hundreds of thousands of nodes, um, all interoperating with each other, sharing data and finding content. Um, and that's phenomenal. Um, we also have seen a lot of growth on our gateway. Um, a lot of different people run IPFS HTTP gateways to kind of bridge all of the content and data being shared in the IPFS network to those accessing it from kind of regular web two worlds. Um, and we're seeing lots and lots of usage there as well. Um, over 12 terabytes of data being accessed uh, just from our gateway per week. And we know that Cloudflare and Pinata and Textile and other groups also run run gateways that are fetching data. So lots of lots of information living in the IPFS ecosystem that people are trying to fetch over gateways as well. Um, and kind of most excitingly, um, another update on the uh, perform network performance side of things in IPFS 0 0.5, which was uh, what we talked about at our last IPFS meetup um, back in, I think it was end of April, beginning of May timeframe. Um, we launched a lot of new performance improvements to how quickly you can find information in IPFS and how resilient or like a responsibly IPFS can, can serve data to you. Um, and we've seen some awesome improvements in the, the performance even since the last time we updated people on the, um, the work happening here. And so I, in IPFS, uh, the previous versions, we were seeing like pretty slow performance in that 95th percentile um, case, and we've seen that go down to under five seconds, which was the, the goal that we were aiming for, uh, which is really phenomenal. And these numbers have already improved 3x since where we were even just like a month and a half ago, which is really amazing. And um, I think we can very happily celebrate that the, the goal that we took on for the first half of 2020 around improving content routing performance has really solidly been met, uh, which is really exciting. And uh, so thank you to the network for, for all of the, the work upgrading and um, actually 
helping improve the, the distribution of nodes participating in the DHT, which helps make um, this information more accessible to people trying to find it and helps us improve all of these performance metrics for folks. So pretty awesome. Awesome, so maybe jumping into some of the ecosystem highlights, which is really the, the meat of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, we kind of kicked off at the very end of, of Q1 with um, IPF, IPFS colon slash slash support launching default in Opera for Android. So now you can enter um, any IPFS content path and that will resolve seamlessly for you in the browser, which is super exciting. It was the first major browser to offer default IPFS support like that, which is um, really amazing. Uh, the, the next major thing that we talked about um, kind of at the, the beginning of um, Q2 was launching IPFS 0.5, which helped us get these performance improvements and really was just a major upgrade across the board for the performance of IPFS and um, usability by a ton of different groups building on top of it. Um, a big component of 0.5 and being able to land all of those improvements was test ground, which also launched, I think, a, a week or two afterward, um, which is this peer-to-peer -peer network testing, benchmarking, simulation tool that's been used by a number of different groups now, but was super critical to validating the features, especially around hard, like um, improving and um, tweaking the DHT, because it's very, very core to IPFS's um, like ability to find and discover content. And we wanted to make sure that any changes we made wouldn't have negative repercussions on all of the people currently depending on the network. So use TestGround very heavily to simulate and benchmark and validate that these improvements were going to be useful. And this is now open for business and other groups can, can use TestGround um, and a number of groups already have. Uh, for example, Gossip Sub, the 1.1, which brings a lot of hardening improvements to libp2p PubSub, um, also was a heavy user of test ground for um, like running various different potential attack simulations and being able to validate that Gossip Sub was hardened against uh, the, the sorts of attacks that um, folks who are using Gossip Sub, which include um, Ethereum 2 and Filecoin and a number of other blockchains and other ecosystems, um, are all like you know being able to, to utilize this uh, within like their attack um, parameters and configurations. And so also a great example of just being able to, to bring these tools together and um, you know, use them to accelerate our own development and our ability to, to improve these tools and techniques. Um, something that happened, I think, like a week or even a couple of days after our test ground, um, we had an IPFS pinning summit. It's a, kind of our first our, our foray into digital virtual events. We can't get together in person quite as much these days. Um, so this was a, an opportunity to bring together many of the IPFS service providers, tool creators, um, kind of infrastructure um, components of the IPFS ecosystem to present on all of the different ways that um, we're kind of contributing back to making IPFS more accessible, more easy to use from a developer perspective, and the opportunities coming in the next couple of months. Um, there's a lot of great videos of this, um, this series of talks up on IPFS YouTube. Really, really recommend people checking it out. There were people um, presenting from uh, the, the textile team had a lot of things to present, um, Unstoppable Domains, Pinata, um, IOTEX, who's working on UCAM. There were a ton of awesome groups um, who, who participated in the summit and uh, shared a lot of their um, techniques and best practices, some good stuff from Infura. I'm sure there's folks at Fleek, other folks I'm missing, but it was it was a really amazing uh, kind of digital conference um, and really recommend people checking it out. There's a, some good recommendations for kind of how to get started utilizing all of these great infrastructure tools um, in IPFS. Not to be missed, we had two two in a bit, uh, JS IPFS releases. Um, you'll hear more about that soon from Alex, uh, but there's a lot of awesome features included in there as well, um, including support for Go IPFS 0.5 compatibility, faster bit swap, um, and cancelable requests. But I'm sure we will hear much more about the, the actual end user improvements that people get to experience as users of JS IPFS. Um, Another group that came on the scene is Sapien Wallet, which is really cool. Um, they're building on top of Textile and IPFS um, and just a, a light wallet um, with a very beautiful image, if you ask me. Um, but cool things that people are building um, on top of these, these tools and, uh, and these networks. Matrix also launched an update, which was very, very popular. Um, I think mostly very much with the Hacker News crowd, but I think in general, we're, we're super psyched about what they're doing, um, bringing Matrix to kind of the P2P use case built on top of libp2p. They actually have two different 
P2P matrix implementations competing with each other. Very, very cool the, to bring kind of the federated matrix model um, to be fully peer-to-peer. Um, Fleek, launch Fleek storage, so you can easily store and fetch files from IPFS. Um, it brings all of the, the beautiful and kind of smooth UX you expect from Fleek to the, the more um, like data, like file system management use case. Um, it's really beautiful, highly recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it before. Um, also, this launch like two or three days ago um, was uh, kind of work between Unstoppable Domains and Threebox to launch uh, the D blog for decentralized blogging. It has comments, you can have accounts, it's really, really slick and smooth. And a lot of groups have already jumped on this as like a very easy way to um, take what, you know, was a, a kind of more complicated building, building a slightly more um, featureful and complex blog, blogging system and makes it really, really easy for people to, to pick up and get started. Um, and so highly recommend people taking a look at that as well. Um, I think I'm almost to the end. Block scan, I think this just launched yesterday, which is super cool. Um, Etherscan launched a, uh, a search engine for de decentralized websites. And so um, kind of if you're familiar with allminute.eth, this also looks across um, .crypto and .zill domains. So you can get a, a good kind of index and query across them for um, the, the sort of information that people are, are making for DWeb websites. Uh, and finally, um, we're, we'll hear more about this today as well. Um, ION launched their uh, distributed identity system built on DIDs, IPFS, and Bitcoin. Um, a lot of really cool stuff. Super excited to, to see this project like um, lift off to its next uh, wave of, of functionality and, and openness. And uh, really excited to continue supporting these guys as they, as they push forward. Identity is a hard space, and they are um, like really trailblazing a path. So uh, excited to continue. Um, hearing more about that shortly. Awesome, so that's kind of Q2. A lot of stuff has already happened, even though we just had our last meetup, I think like, yeah, you know, a month and a half ago, all of this stuff has happened since then, which is really cool. Um, some quick sneak peeks for Q3. Um, first, pinning service integrations into desktop and web UI. This is something that we previewed at the IPFS Pinning Summit. Um, then the IPFS Ignite Hackathon, which is coming in the next couple of months, um, and then IPFS and Brave. So first one, um, you might have, if you attended the Pinning Summit, be familiar with the idea that um, IPFS Desktop and Web UI, while great for managing your local node, um, there's some opportunities for us to more deeply integrate um, the pinning services that people use frequently for um, kind of more cross-node replication and resilience of data getting added to IPFS. Um, and so we've updated some of our mocks. Um, active work is happening here. If you're excited about this, um, please do send us a note and. Um, you know, expect to see progress happening in like web UI and desktop folders. For Filecoin Ignite, this is a really cool series of hackathons that are happening over the next couple of months. Um, people who are building tools and dApps on IPFS and Filecoin um, and kind of plugging in Filecoin to the, the tools they're building from a persistent standpoint. Um, and so a lot, of, a lot of people are like hard at work on making that um, kind of easy and a smooth, a smooth user experience for IPFS developers to onboard on. Um, but if you're excited about this, please do get involved. Um, I think there's gonna be a number of different events and ways that you can participate. Um, so keep an eye out and we'd love to, to see the cool stuff you build. And finally, you may have seen a, a fancy new issue open up on the, the Brave side of things. Um, active work has started on, on this and we're super excited to support the Brave team as they push forward to um, adding more native IPFS support on Brave. So exciting days here. Um, and of course, big, big thank you in general to our wider IPFS community. You guys are, are the ones who are launching all of these amazing new things and tools and projects that make IPFS stronger and better and working and collaborating with each other to help lift this whole community up. It's one of the things we all like really, really love about um, working in the IPFS space. So thank you all for all of the contributions you make um, and all of the, the things you are shipping that make this ecosystem stronger. Um, it's really, really great to work with y'all. Um, it's great. So get excited. It's going to be another phenomenal quarter. Q3 brings a lot of awesome launches, and we're really excited to keep working with you. And if anyone has questions, feel free to drop them in the Ask a Question section in the chat, or you can DM me on Twitter. That's also a very common way for people to ask me any questions. So I'm um, excited to, to continue connecting with you guys. Thank you, Molly. That was so good. That's so much information in 15 minutes. You really used that 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to watch it back at uh, 0.8 speed. Um, we do have a question in chat. 
how traceable is the originator of content? So can it be traced back to where it was first added and pinned, or are there access logs for the implementation? I think not not super traceable to an original point. All people, you know, IPFS is not um, super privacy oriented right now. And so definitely um, don't don't be hosting or seeding content that um, you don't want associated with the IP of the node that you're seeding it from. Um, and so, you know, be, be thoughtful about that. But, um, you know, who started seeding content first or those sorts of things is not information that, that the IPFS you know, network itself is, you know, harvesting information on or, um, you know, trying to make accessible to people. So I, I think uh, it's more about kind of many parties resiliently storing and helping spread and share content. Um, and so uh, it, it, the the kind of tracing functionality there is, is not built into the IPFS network, but like always be careful because people can build systems on top of it, and, you know, harvest any public information and hold it for long periods of time. So, uh, you know, it's definitely not built in, but, but things to be careful of.